Hey all, birds on the bat here. So it's been a while since I last posted and actually I did have a video that I meant to record. Um, it was a modern submission, a pretty short one, but in light of the recent PSA price hike, I had to get that out so quickly that I just didn't have time to, uh, uh, to take a video of it. It was a pretty boring submission though, just some of the you know little Kobe stickers I've, I've submitted into some of my other videos. I went down a Tory Holt rabbit hole, which was Eh, maybe a waste of money, but whatever. <laughs> uh, and submitted some Tory Holt cards and and a, a couple more that I, you know, cards for my PC. But what I'm doing today is uh, I'm recording a video of a PSA submission return that I recently got back. This was a uh, two, actually two separate submissions, each seven cards that I submitted through uh, the Triple Crown 24 and Mikeo's grading submission uh, Facebook group. I submitted seven of these cards in July, seven of them in August, I got them all back at the same time um, because uh, the August submission was submitted with an express order, so um, moved a little quicker. So before I get into the cards and talk about what I've got here, uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually go into these little kind of care packages that JT includes with the uh, with the submissions. So if you submit with the group, JT puts these little uh, packages for each person. You know, maybe a card or two that you collect. Uh, and uh, looks like a Donruss, is it Leaf? Oh, Leaf Pack, I don't know. I'm gonna <laughs> open it and see what it is. So, I'm a Cardinals fan, Cardinals collector, as I've gone into on this channel, so it's really sweet that JT included this Topps Cone Black uh, Paul Goldschmidt card. I don't think I've ever seen one. Oh, and that's awesome, a Luke Weaver rookie. That's 2017 Topps, it's sweet. Didn't have a great career at the Cardinals, but uh, smooth pickup there, JT, because Luke Weaver went to Florida State, which it does not say. <laughs> but I went to Florida State as well, so same college. And then the other one here is a Topps Chrome Black. Kind of new set by Topps. Paul Goldschmidt, numbered to 75. Oh, that's sweet. Thanks, JT. Okay, what do we have here? It looks like a, what, 1989 Don Russ pack. So that's awesome. So what we're looking for in this uh, this kind of pack is the Griffey, the Randy Johnson, uh, the Kurt Schilling, uh, John Smoltz, and I think the Craig Biggio. So uh, let's let's get into it. Oh, Burt Blylevin on the back, a Hall of Famer. That's kind of sweet. <laughs> Is there no gum? Where's my gum? <laughs> um, okay. So Warren Spawn, kind of the little uh, puzzle card. Got Mark Grace, great player for the Cubs, which pff, don't want to say that, but wow, was that off center? <laughs> Chuck Finley, had a really nice career. Kelly Gruber. Oops, got to get in the camera. Ernie White, Randy Kramer, Danny Heap, Jay Howell, Mike Davis. Dennis Rasmussen, Mickey Brantley, Carlton Fisk. Wow, cool, Hall of Famer. Chad Kruder, Luis Medina, rated rookie. Terry Pendleton, that's sweet. Won an MVP with the Braves. And Burt Blylevin. All right, that's awesome. That was a sweet first pack. Didn't get any of the big rookies, but some cool cards in there. Okay. So now let's go to my second one of these. <laughs> two submissions, I did get two of these. JT always being uh, as generous as always. So let's see what we got here. In the front we've got a Kyle Lewis rookie, which is actually really, uh, really interesting given that he's the only major rookie I never pulled out of series one. So it's really cool that JT sent this. I never told him that, but um, well I have now since I got the package, but that's sweet. Oh, and that's awesome. It's 1969 Topps Dick Williams. Again, JT with the intuition. This is one of the few uh, 1969 Hall of Famers that I do not have a card of. So that is awesome. I mean, he's he's in the Hall of... Uh, the 69 set as a manager. So, you know, it wasn't a player anymore. But that is still a sweet card. Thanks so much, JT. That's definitely going into my PC. All right. Let's see what's in this pack. 89 Don Russ. Come on, Griffey. Oh, Andre Dawson on the back. I'm not sure if these packs are 
resealed or something? I don't think they're resealed. Maybe they're from a, a, a box because typically they have gum in them. Okay, so that's a less interesting puzzle piece. <laughs> um, Charlie LeBrant, uh, Doug Drayback, Tim Raines, that's sweet. See, checklist, Cal Daniels, MVP, Jeff Treadway, Ernie Witt, Bo Diaz, Lance McCullers, Sean, Shawan Dunstan, Dale Sfem, Craig Worthington, Mike Fitzgerald, Tom Foley, and Andre Dawson. Ossie Smith should have won the 87 MVP over him, but uh, that's my cardinal homerism speaking, so... <laughs> Sweet. All right, thanks so much, JT. Okay, so the cards that I'm about to show you, uh, these are some interesting cards here. I pulled all of these cards from packs, and I'll go into that a little more as I'm, as I'm uh, thumbing through them. But I pulled all these cards from packs, and these were the first ultra-modern cards that I ever submitted. Uh, I submitted these cards, you know, a lot of it for resale. Uh, some of it I might keep, though, and I, I'm kind of still iffy on a few of them. Um... So I, I picked through my cards that I pulled out of packs, and I really just tried to pick ones that I thought had a good shot at a 10, right? So um, some of these cards aren't like the highest quality, you know, they're not big rookies. Some of them are, but some of these aren't big rookies or anything, but I just really thought they would get a 10. So that's why I submitted them because I was, you know, I could not find an error with them. And I trusted the PSA would grade them properly. And it, it appears they, you know, mostly did, right? <laughs> um, so first card here. I'm ordering them in terms of cheapest to most expensive by uh, current sales prices, so uh, we'll hopefully end with a big bang here. First card I've got is a 2020 Tops Aristides Aquino, Gem Mint 10. Uh, you know, he was a really highly touted rookie going into the 2020 season because he'd hit, what, 19 homers in like a month and a half in the 20, uh, 29, uh, 2019 season. But he didn't make the roster, really didn't really do anything at all, barely made, got any big league play time. Uh, so his card prices have dropped a lot. Uh, luckily, this did get a 10, so I'm not going to get hosed on the resale value, but it's, it only sells for about 18 or 20 bucks. So I'm actually, after shipping and, and after eBay fees, I'm probably going to about break even on this card. Next, I've got a 2019 Tops Eloy Jimenez. PSA 9, and you can see why I got the 9. It's this top left corner. It's just got a little bit of whitening, and I knew that. I still sent it in, figuring that, you know, maybe outside shot it would get a 10. And, you know, Eloy is a great player, really overshadowed by uh, his teammate, Luis Robert, and it, he really shouldn't be because, quite frankly, we've seen more from Eloy to uh, trust that he'll have, you know, the long, great career. Uh, but this card got a mint 9, and in uh, current sale value, it's about 25 bucks. Next, I've got one of several Beau Bichette rookies I pulled from PAX. This one also got a mint nine, 2020 tops Beau Bichette. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this one had a little yeah, white tick up left corner, a little white tick bottom left. So I'm not surprised with the nine. I think it's warranted. Um, yeah, worth about 25 bucks in that grade. So next, I've got a 2020 tops Jordan Alvarez Turkey Red rookie. Uh, this card I knew was a little off-center left to right. You can see, I mean, it's almost like has a little image tilt. <laughs> but I knew that it, it was, I mean, pretty much perfect. No whitening on any corner. Everything was, you know, pretty pretty much great. Um, despite the centering issues, I figured it would probably get a 10. And I was right. It did get a 10. And current sale values of this are about 25 to 30 bucks. Next, I've got the same card, uh, but of Gavin Lux. Uh, so again, a little off center left to right, but still looks great. Uh, same deal. Absolutely no whitening anywhere on the card. Figured it would get a 10. It did get a 10. So it's worth about 30 to 35 bucks. Next, I've got a 2019 Topps Chrome Ronald Acuna Jr. Future Stars. So I submitted this card. I mean, it's not an Acuna rookie. It's a second year card. Uh, almost an insert of sorts in the uh, 2019 Topps Chrome set. And it's got that nice refractor finish, even though, I mean, all of them do. It's not a parallel or anything. Uh, I submitted this because I thought it would grade well. It does have like a little edge irregularity on the cut down here somewhere, which I actually thought might knock it down to a nine, but I think I was being too harsh because, it, I mean, you can't even see anything. It, it 
I mean, it looks fantastic. It's deserving of the 10. And in a 10, this is worth about 30, 35 bucks. So next, I've got the Ronald Acuna Jr. from 2020 Tops, 1985 Tops, 35th anniversary card. So I submitted this, again, just because I thought it would get a 10. There was absolutely no whitening. I did realize that it is a little off-centered left to right. Right, the, the left border here is a little bigger than the right, and I was a little worried that might knock it down to a 9. I knew it was in the threshold of a 10, but I was still worried uh, it might knock it down to a 9. But nonetheless, you know, I sent it in, I took the shot, and it did get the 10. And this card, you know, it's a third-year card. Certainly nothing that special. Um, what's nice about it, though, is that it's not a card that too many people have graded. So whenever these do hit the market, there's not very many of them you know, in the pop report, um, Acuna collectors and Braves collectors, you know, will jump at the opportunity to grab them. So this card actually sells for about 35 to 40 when it, um, when it's, you know, at least those are the recent sales on eBay. And it's, it's really just because it's, it's not that common to see this card graded. So, uh, again, pretty happy that I grabbed that. So next I've got the 2019 Topps Chrome Mike Trout, Ronald Acuna Jr., Greatness Returns, insert. And this is a sweet card. I mean, this thing it has a refractor finish. Uh, it's, again, not a parallel. It's just how all of them are in the set. It got the Gem Mint 10. I was actually worried this card might get as low as an 8 because it has somewhere in the back stock. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly. There it is. It's on the line between Angels and OF of Trout. You see that? It's almost like a surface dimple right there. It's almost a little surface dimple. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a an issue with just the cardstock, just that the cardstock had a natural in essence bubble in it. And I was worried that PSA might take off with that, but you know, I, I think that they kind of realize that's that's not damaged, that's minor enough. That's kind of something that just happens with, you know, cardstock and chrome stock. So not that big a deal. It did get the 10, it has an absolutely perfect surface. It's perfectly, you know, it's really well centered. Uh, and in this grade, it's worth about 60 to 70 bucks. So, uh, nice return there. Okay, now we're getting to the more interesting cards. I've got here a 2020 Tops Eloy Jimenez second year card with the Rookie Cup. Uh, and, you know, even in a 10, in a 10, the, the base card sells for about 15 bucks. It's really not worth getting graded. Um, there is somewhat of a market for the Rookie Cup card. So, it, you know, it... If you get a rookie rookie cup card, a second year player card of a, of a notable player, it's worth sleeving it up. But this one I pulled out of a blaster, and I uh, I graded it because it's the vintage stock, right? You can see here it has the old school tops logo, and it is numbered out of ninety nine. So I I <laughs> I sent the, this in for grading, and after I got it back, I'm really shocked that it got the ten, quite frankly. Because you can see here on the bottom border, it has a little white tick. And that is, I mean, that's really the only damage with the card. Um, I didn't expect it to get a 10 because of that. I thought it would get a 9. But, you know, I mean, 10s aren't perfect. So I, I think that a 10 is, you know, it's a it's an appropriate grade. It's not out, outlandish for this card. So this card is interesting, though. It's the one card in this list I don't really know how to price. Um, it's a pop 1. There's also a PSA 9. So I don't I don't have really much sales data to go on. Um, I can tell you that an SP from 2020 Tops, uh, a Gem Mint 10, sold for $95 recently, so I would assume somewhat generally similar, but I, I really don't know. Okay, now I've got the Beau Bichette Gem Mint 10 rookie card. So this card, uh, again, I actually thought this would grade a 9, just like the other one. I think I was being too harsh, though. Um... Because it's, I mean, it's a really clean card. And I actually think, looking at it again, it probably does deserve the 10. I think I, I thought it might grade a 9 because it has a slight white edge tick right there. And I think I was just being too harsh again. Um, again, 10s aren't even perfect cards, right? They don't have to be absolutely perfect in every way because this card is otherwise absolutely perfect. So, um, yeah, I think the, the, the grade is warranted. And in a 10, it's worth about 100, 115 bucks. Next, I've got the 2020 Tops Luis Robert. So this card, uh, JT mentioned in the uh, submission video uh, that I thought it was absolutely pristine, and I, I still think that. I mean, looking at the corners, the edges, everything on this card, um, this card is the kind of card that I could actually probably have sent to Beckett and and uh, 
I mean, you can never really pre uh, predict a pristine 10 or black label or anything like that. But I mean, as far as the cards that I have, this one would certainly have a strong chance because it, I mean, there's absolutely, I can't find a single error with it whatsoever. So this was actually a pretty good litmus test for me because um, if this card didn't come back at 10, I, I mean, I would have been absolutely floored um, and, and really kind of lost some faith in PSA's grading. Um, so yeah, this card came back to 10. Uh, he didn't have the rookie season that everyone expected. He came out really hot and then kind of tailed off. But nonetheless, even uh, now in a 10, this is worth about 145, 150 bucks. Okay. Next, I've got from Topps Chrome Update, the Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, rookie debut, Gem Mint 10. So this card uh, has really spiked up in value. I actually thought this would get a nine because you can see the border on the right here is about twice as thick as the border on the bottom. Maybe not twice, but it's it's visibly thicker. Um, otherwise, the card has absolutely no problems, but I was a little worried it would get a nine because that still sent it in. Uh, nine sells for about 50, 60 bucks. Um, but now a 10 is up to about 250 bucks. So I'm uh, really happy with that return. Next, this is one of the cards I'm happiest with by far. I've got the uh, the Fernando Tatis Jr. Gem Mint 10 Base Rookie. This card I pulled from the exact same pack as the um, Eloy Jimenez that pulled a 9. I bought, actually when I was just getting into uh, back into cards, I bought a 2019 Series 2 Cello Pack <laughs> online for $9. And, I mean, those things are not rigid. It was a total gamble that I would have got any card in nice shape from them. But I got this card and the Eloy. And even in a nine, the Eloy looks great, but this card is beautiful. I mean, I was a little worried it could get a nine because of a little bit of, you know, edging up here. You can see little white dots. Those are from um, the cut. Um, but the card is otherwise, I mean, it's 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 beautiful. It's perfect. It deserves the 10. Um, I was a little worried it might not get the 10, which would kind of bum me out. But I'm really happy it did because it's worth about 300 to 330 bucks. And of all the cards in the submission, even though this one's way overprinted, it's probably the one I'm most likely to keep because I do believe Tatis uh, is going to have a fantastic career and he just looks to have Hall of Fame talent all around and um, I collect Hall of Fame rookie cards and why not <laughs> oh, why not keep one uh, in a 10 if I have it? And finally, the biggest card by far, Fernando Tatis Jr. Tops Chrome Sepia Refractor. Uh, so this card I pulled from the same um, blaster as the... Uh, Future Stars Acuna and the Greatness Returns Trout Acuna cards. Uh, this card was actually from the very first pack, box, anything I bought when I was coming back into the hobby. It's the very first thing I did was buy a 2019 Topps Chrome Blaster, and those three cards were in it. This was in the Sepia pack. Uh, at the time, I knew it was a big pull. It was selling for about 85, 90 bucks raw. Um, I actually thought this would get a 9, and I still am really surprised it got a 10, because you can see the right border here is a lot thinner than the bottom, and the glove is actually kind of almost disappearing into the border. Typically, there's a little bit of daylight between the two. Also, down here, this bottom corner is like a little soft-ish. It's not as perfect as I'd like, but it got the 10. It has absolutely no surface issues, so I figured that's that, you know, that might be why they uh, they gave it the 10. And I mean, it looks beautiful. And when, you know, when I got this grade, I didn't get upcharged, which was shocking. I mean, JT expressed that in his video that he was shocked that this wasn't upcharged as well. And uh, current sales prices are at about $800 for this thing, which is about a month's rent for me. So I'm, I might be, uh, I might have to sell this one. I mean, that is a lot of money. Um, so in total of the 14 cards, I got uh, 12 tens and two nines. Um, so pretty fantastic results. That's a great gem rate. Uh, of the 14, uh, I spent, I don't know how much I spent for packs. I mean, it's hard to remember because almost ripping packs to me is almost in a way divorced from, I guess this is my way to justify things, but it's almost in a way divorced from, you know, buying, selling, grading just cause it's so much fun. It's just a totally different activity. So I didn't really keep, I don't really keep track of when I buy packs, you know, value wise. Um, at the same time though, I can't imagine that I spent over 100 to 200, I mean 150 maybe, on the total amount for all the packs that I pulled these cards from. Um, so I spent 217 on grading, uh, and the combined value is $1,940. Uh, so 
we'll say that I, I put in roughly, you know, 350, 400, uh, and I got about 1,940 back. On a good day, I could even see it going as much as 10,000. I mean, as 2,000, <laughs> not 10,000, dependent on how well this card sells. So pretty great ROI there. I mean, that's about a 500% increase on return. So um, hobby's booming. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Bye.